This episode is brought to you by our friends at Brooks Blooms, your all-in-one landscaping solution. Brooks Blooms three-step landscaping experience offers a seamless journey from design to construction and ongoing care, ensuring your outdoor space thrives year-round. Visit brooksblooms.com today to embark on your landscaping journey where every step is a step towards a vibrant and beautiful outdoor entertaining space. Welcome back, guys, to another episode of the Ads and Dunks podcast, exclusively brought to you by the Oz American Aces and obviously our uh, well, the best landscaping company in uh, in Australia at the moment, worldwide, in Brooks Blooms. Um, it's Josh Dunkley here, one of your hosts, and joining me on the line is my good mate, Adzi Trelaw. How you going, mate? Yeah, going well, mate. Just got to get used to the uh, Brooks Blooms little sponsorship uh, segment that we have. Um, well, not segment, just little... Um, shout out at the start of each episode because we're so pumped to have him uh, as our as our sponsor and we love Brooke. But yeah, going well, mate. I um I was thirty last week when I did the episode. Now I'm thirty one, so I feel the exact <laughs> same. But um yeah, going okay. How are you going? I'm going good. Hey, let's touch on that first because I know you were thirty one on Saturday and. I'm sitting here, I was a little bit flat because I didn't get a reply from you and I'm thinking, what the hell's going on? Adzi's not replying to me. I try to call you, nothing back and I'm like, something's happening here and I, I got a bit nervous. I was a bit worried like you might have been flat with me or something, you know, <laughs> something's going on and then uh, yep. Sunday I sent you another message just following up and you said, nah, you got a new phone so you're all good. That's exactly what the case was, mate. I got a new phone so uh, my phone... Um stopped working uh well when i woke up there was just a black screen and stopped working so i was getting calls and i was getting messages but my screen was literally black so i yeah i literally couldn't get to the shops quick enough i eventually got a phone and my first message was at 12:01 p.m. from one of my great mates Brent McCaffer so i already knew that i um i'd missed or well, however long i'd missed what well, that's 8 hours or 12 hours of my birthday already so I knew there was going to be a message there, but I didn't want to go out seeking, you know, I didn't want a messenger saying, oh, hey, mate, did you wish me happy birthday? Because I've yeah, got yeah, phone. Yeah. But um, <laughs> no, nah, mate, I could never be angry at you. You know how much I love you. No, nah, imagine if I was replying like, no, nah, I haven't messaged you yet. What are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure that because there was a few boys at the footy club who, um, Harmsy came straight up to me when I seen him on the Monday. He goes, oh, well, what's with the no reply on the weekend, mate? And I was like, mate, oh, I've had freaking <laughs> – Five or six people already asked me this, but um, yeah, had to, uh, had no phone. But now I've got a phone, so you can mess- message me away. The only shit thing about getting a new phone is having to worry about re-downloading all the apps and um, oh. making making sure everything's set up. And you know, whether it, we do a lot of our uh, like footy stuff, for instance, we, in terms of our gym programs and everything off our phone. So got to set all that up. Go find out passwords that you haven't found out and. Well, I reckon I've only known one password since the first time I moved to the Bulldogs. So I had to go find a couple of people to organise my passwords. But um, yeah, that was probably the most uh, annoying thing about getting a phone. Nah, that's good. I was uh, I was trying to think of something to get you, and I see in the background now that you've got a brand new chair, well, gaming chair that someone's obviously got you for your birthday. So I've still got to get you something, and I I'm finding it really hard to find something. What do you want? <laughs> um. Well, I don't want anything, mate. I want your love. That's no, all I you want. Do. But um, you do. Nah, well, firstly, um, shout out to Kimmy and Jess. They uh, they bought me this chair for my birthday, and I've been uh, meaning to get one for a while. Because um, to the right of of the screen here, I actually have my little gaming uh, PlayStation as well. So I play a bit of NBA Two K and Madden. So. It's very convenient to sit here and play a game and, and obviously sit and, and do the podcast. So, And obviously the first priority was for the podcast, not the gaming system. <laughs> um, but um, it's a nice little chair, which I rate. But uh, if you're going to get me anything, in all seriousness, my watch yeah. is horrendous. Like my, my Apple watch is about six years too old. It dies halfway throughout the day. I can't track my calories. As you know, I love tracking my calories and tracking – how many I burn a day and whatnot. So, mate, if you want to get me a new Apple Watch, get me a new Apple Watch. All right. I might have to take a loan out to get that one. But, uh, hey, speaking of wristbands, I've got to mention this. Um, last week at our captain's run, one of the fans. Hang on, I can't see it. Yeah, I can't see it. One of the fans oh, yeah. in, uh, in the crowd gave me this. Can you read that? It says ads and ads, it says ads, ads cross dunks. dunks. 
Oh, wow. And then it's got your number and then it's got the Bulldogs colors. And then I've got another one here, <laughs> oh. which is a Brisbane Lions one. So it's Taylor Swift, obviously, um, kind of bracelet. And we've got a – yeah, there you go. You've got another <laughs> one here. So I'll, I'll send this one down to you. And thanks to um, – the girl in the crowd that gave it to me—it's pretty cool. I thought they're sick. They are sick. I, I don't. I don't take mine off. Mine obviously have Georgie Griffin and Sonny on there, but um, I definitely wear. It's fun. We're wearing the black band as well. Yep. I'd um, <laughs> I definitely uh, wear rock the ads and dunks. Uh, Swift. What are they called? Swifties. What? No. What are they called? Swifty bracelet. Swifty, Swifty bracelet, bracelet. Is it? No friendship bracelet. I believe. I think it's a friendship bracelet. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Um. I was waiting for Brado to come over the headphones and know exactly what it is, even though he <laughs> last week just turned 34 as well. So, well done, Brado, but I'm sure you know what a Swifty uh, bracelet is as well. But um, no, that's cool. That's cool. I reckon. I'll, I reckon. I reckon there'll be a, probably a point where a fan might do the same for me here in Melbourne. I mean, we kickstart our games off this week, so um, I, I, did, I, actually, I actually did have a couple fans give out um, friendship bracelets. One that had. Uh, Kim's name, one that had uh, my name, one that had your name separately, so just Dunkley, not even Jay. It was just Dunkley, and there was one more. I forgot who it was, but um, yeah, that's tucked away in the in the wardrobe somewhere. But um, but yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's been a good week. I mean, I uh, I watched you play um on the Friday, and um, we can get into that a little bit later. But uh, that was a uh, unbelievable game to watch, an unbelievable turn of events. Um, it's fair to say but other than that mate how was your week since the last time that we spoke yeah we um we played on friday night but my weekend was pretty quiet i ended up going to watch the vfl on saturday uh, they played yeah, a practice game on the gold coast my brother played and um obviously the boys as well so it was good to go watch them and they played quite well it was a it, mate, i've never you remember that oh you didn't train with us in COVID at that um that ground outside gold coast stadium you know the metricon no. I know that one, yeah. Stadium there. Well, this ground is like just known for a massive cross breeze. And on Saturday, it was blowing a gale. I've never seen it so strong. And the boys were just trying to like pick apart. It was just too hard to move the footy. So ended up being a bit scrappy, but went and watched that. Then called into the uh, Gold Coast races because Jada was strapping a couple of horses. So went in there and, um, and then headed out to... Then headed back home. I had mum and my uncle with me as well. So Kaiser came along to the races after and then we just headed back home and got some dinner on Saturday night and that was really it, mate. Sunday was pretty low key. Uh, took mum and my uncle to the airport uh, and then, yeah, just pretty quiet week since then, just a normal training routine kind of week. So it's been nice to have some visitors. I've actually got – actually, I should have mentioned this. Uh, I'm, I'm doing some house renos in my – like mm-hmm. for my main bedroom. Um, so Ash and Leah, you know, Ash and Leah off the block. Do you watch mm-hmm. the block? I don't watch, so it, actually, watch it, but I do know them. They're actually doing my, my well, mine and Tipper's main bedroom at the moment. Mm-hmm. So they're, they're finishing up. So the results going to be coming soon, which would be cool. That'd be exciting. Might have to get another sponsor on board. We might have to rival, <laughs> yeah. uh, Brooke and, and, uh, her landscaping. But, um, no, I'll get back to what you said you did on the weekend. You obviously mentioned the Gold Coast races. Did you hit any winners? Uh, I got what did I get? Lady Laguna. That was my best one. Oh, Lady Laguna! What a horse! Honestly, what a horse! Yeah, um, that was really all I got. Mm, that was all I really did for the, my birthday was watch the races. In Paratrees was a uh, little bit of a letdown, but I've got no doubt that you mm. would have been probably riding the winner or someone else because that's just exactly what you do. You always go against the favourite. But um, <laughs> no, I, uh, we're loving our racing, but um. Other than that, to get anything exciting, anything and anything else exciting to report before we get into footy? No, not really, mate. Not really. How uh, how's your week been? Obviously, you had the weekend off, um, footy wise. Like, how's it been training wise? Did you have a big session on the weekend, or did you just have the weekend off to freshen up for round one? Uh, yeah, we had a um, we had a big session Friday, so a match parameter session, which was really good. Um, yeah, we really set ourselves up for the week. We had the weekend off, uh, which was nice. Um, yeah, and then you know, as as you as you as you know, you you then approach the week just like a regular week mid year. It doesn't matter if it's first week or you know week twelve. So um, today's obviously Tuesday, so we uh, this gets obviously gets released on a Wednesday, and I can uh, happily say this, but um, we've already announced um, three debutants for us this week, 
this week's game. We got announced today um, in Nick Cofield, 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 however you want to pronounce it. Um, Lockie Bramble and James Harms, so three players from rival clubs who who have been, yeah, or just uh, incredible, incredibly. Um, Refreshing, you know, coming into a new environment, not only for themselves, but for us. Uh, obviously, experienced players who have experienced other footy clubs and environments. And, um, you know, they, they came in with, a, I guess, a point to prove in wanting to, you know, solidify themselves, break into a team and the respect. And that's exactly what they've done over the preseason. So, so extremely impressed by all three of them. Um, you know, Lockie Bramble didn't really train with the main group until – well, mate, would have been when I trained with the main group. So that's what probably a couple of weeks ago because that's normally what I do. But um, that's that's how long – yeah, he hadn't trained with the main group because he had a shoulder um, surgery at the end of the last year. So it's shown – it shows how, um, you know, how much he's impressed all of us by him, you know, get confirming that he's debuting this week. So, yeah, it's uh, that's kind of been the only unique start to the week for us. But it's been, it's been a good week. We're able to watch Melbourne play, obviously, last Thursday. Got a good gauge on, on – um, you know, more so the team that they're going to present and how they want to play and whatnot. And, um, yeah, it's, you know, it's cool because the real stuff is back. So um, it'll be funny because you would have already played two games before I've even played one game, um, <laughs> which I um, which I laugh a little bit about. But, yeah, the week's been pretty cool. And, um, yeah, just going to uh, obviously keep, uh, keep uh, anticipating for the week to um, go as normal. And then, yeah, we go from there and play Melbourne. Are you pretty keen to... To get stuck in it, probably a stupid question, not, but you know, preseason, everything sort of happens really quickly. I feel, and then all of a sudden, games are upon you. Like, do you feel ready, ready to go? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, I do. I um, I feel physically, I feel really good. I feel, I always say it, I always feel as best as I could feel, but I do. I feel really good. Um, you know, I was able to, uh, you know, train for a large chunk of uh, the post Christmas preseason, which is a big, which is big for me, and. Um, essentially didn't miss a match sim um, really post Christmas and you know to be able to play a practice game into a um, official practice game is is a big tick for me and to feel good throughout it and, and build the cohesion early with the other midfielders and the other boys um, it's nice so I personally feel really good. I know the guys are, are really really antsy and, and just can't wait to get out there. I know watching uh, the games on the weekend they. Um, you know, it's what most boys w- were talking about when we came in on Monday because um, obviously there was games and everyone's just really super excited to get out there. We, we know that, um, you know, we know the hard work that's gone into the preseason and the drive that we're all trying to drive forward for our group. Um, and we know if we bring our standard of footy and how we want to play, the sky's the limit for us. I um, feel like there's a really good balance between youth and experience. Um, and been really impressed, as I said, with the guys that have come through already. Um, you know, a couple of young players that are coming through who we spoke last week, but who were, have been extremely impressive and um, can't wait to see how they go when they get a taste of AFL footy. So, yeah, to, it's fair to say that uh, we're, we're pumped and ready to go. I know it's probably another silly question, but who's one that you should you reckon we should all look out for this year? And it can't be it can't be an established player like that gets a game every week. Let's 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 go deeper than that. I spoke about 10 minutes about him last episode, Riley Sanders. Do you want me to talk about Riley yeah, Sanders well, again? Someone else. Someone else. Um, yeah, well, so Sando's the one for me. I think outside of Sando, I think, oh, there's guys that who don't really get that much recognition. I'm trying to think because I mentioned Buku Kamas, who's been, you know, who's probably been our most impressive defender all, all preseason, offseason with Liam Jones. Um, I'm going to say someone like uh, Latham Vandermeer, who I feel like, um, you know, knock on wood, he, he, his body holds together and, um, you know, he's so quick and powerful and strong. He's one of the most powerful and fastest guys or kids that I've – not well, not kid, a guy that I've seen. Um, it, you know, sometimes he's, he's too quick for his own good and he, he get a soft tissue here or whatever it may be. But he's been able to string pretty much the whole preseason together without any issue and – when he brings his speed from the position that he plays, which is typically as that high forward, the role that, you know, is probably the hardest position in the AFL, which is that high half forward where you got to get up and back, up and back, up and back, put pressure on, bring your speed to the contest. When he does that, it's, um, yeah, I, I, th- I think it's it's as good as um, anyone that I've seen. And I'm really excited to see what he brings. I think another one to mention the same breath as Lathy Vandermeer is Lockie McNeil, who 
yeah, is, you know, we've seen him in the preseason do it, but he's someone as well who is kind of playing the similar role to Lathy and um, playing it to a T. He's an ulti- ultimate team man. He does everything you want from a team player, from a high half forward. Um, defensively, he's sound. He works his tail off both ways. So, yeah, they're probably the two that really come to mind outside of, obviously, as I said, Riley Sanders. And I think there was a quote today that that uh, that Bevo said in the in the media that um, he's never seen anyone in, in his time of footy come in the doors and be as impactful as he has as an 18-year-old. And as I said last week, mate, this kid is unbelievable. He is something special. So... Um, we do a lot of our we do a lot of our stuff together. So I do all my training with him, all one on one stuff with him. Um, literally everything we do together, all our tackling stuff. So you could imagine too. Um, he's a competitive beast. And he weighs probably eight kilos more than me. So you could imagine two uh, absolute competitive animals going at it today when we're doing something like a low level craft stoppage drill. It's just one of those. Um, one of those – reminds me of you and I, but it's one of those drills where it's just hit the ball to the ground. Essentially, whoever's the first player there, just let him get it. But we were like freaking wrestling, like full-on wrestling to try and win the ball when ladies come over and go, oh, no, just stop it. Stop being a competitive animal. So, um, yeah, he's uh, – uh, I'm talking about Riley Sanders again, mate. <laughs> you might uh, might have to admit that I've got a little bit of a man crush on him about how good he is. But, um, yeah, he's uh, he's going to be the more impressive one, I think, from from most of our players. Yeah, speaking of those guys, I feel like your small forwards, Riley West is another one that caught the eye in yes. the preseason. Yes. They've all had really good – well, you can tell they've had really good preseasons. So mm. um, exciting times, hopefully, ahead for you boys. And um, speaking of Bevo, actually, I just want to bring up one last thing of Bevo. I saw his press conference or bits and pieces I read over Twitter or whatever. Um, he was talking today about no one spotting the team being safe because the young boys coming through are really pushing. Do you feel – like that helps you as an individual with the young guys Definitely. really pushing for for selection. Absolutely, mate. I um, you seen, you know, from from the last game that we played in our in our preseason game against Hawthorne, we we essentially had our best team out there that was available, and there were some really really good players who, unfortunately, weren't playing because they just, you know, whether it was coming back from injury or whatever it may be, but there was just guys that have been pressing and pressing and pressing and and who have been impressive, um. And, and, you know, solidifying their spot. So, yeah, I definitely feel like it makes you as an individual perform better. I feel like it's it's clearly a lot healthier for the list and healthier for the footy club because um, each individual then plays with a bit of an edge, a bit of a hunger and a drive to know that their position is essentially not safe. I mean, barring Mark Sponsapelli, probably Tim English, Aaron Norton, Liam Jones, Tom Libertore, they're probably the safest – uh, jobs at our footy club outside of that. I mean, anyone um, – and, and that's great. It's great because as as you just said and as you said from Bevo's presser, the guys that have been at lower level. I mean, another guy that comes to mind is um, Luke Cleary who, you know, who's an absolute mm. – who's, who's had a flawless preseason who I, I think is a genuine gun and, um, you know, when, when he plays this year, you'll see that he is more than capable of playing at the AFL level and being a very, very, very good player and – um, that's just an example of someone who is pushing for for senior action, and and when he does play, he's you know going to be a standout for us. So, I definitely feel like it's something that's really good for us and healthy for our group. Yeah, it's good to hear. Good to hear that everyone's fit and firing and ready to go for the D's on Sunday. What time? Three thirty, mate. I'm sure your um your eyes will be on it. I know uh, you love watching your old boys, the Bulldogs boys. Um, yeah, three thirty, which will be one thirty Perth time. I might be playing. I might be at the ground by then, so I won't be able to watch. Oh, you guys playing Sunday as well? Yeah, we play Sunday four forty, I think. Your time. Mm, all right. Well, well I'll be yeah, checking yeah. straight after. Well, yeah, I'll be checking straight after. Um, I guess speaking of you guys, before we touch on, uh, you playing Frio, I presume, or West Coast, obviously. Yep. Frio. <laughs> um, Golden Perth, yeah, playing Frio. <laughs> Uh, oh, it's good. Before we touch on that, we'll obviously uh, talk about uh, your absolute blockbuster of a game, um, a tale of two stories. Uh, you mm. started off like uh, the absolute premiership favourites um, at a blistering first quarter, first half, really. And then, yeah, and then uh, it obviously fell apart from there. Um, you know, I guess I'll let you do the talking. Where where do you feel like it kind of went wrong and, and what are the learnings you take out of it? Yeah, I mean, I'll probably start with the first quarter and a bit, quarter and a half, I guess. Um, 
it was some of the best footy I reckon I've ever been a part of. Like just the way we were both offensively attacking them and defensively killing their offense was just incredible. And I feel like as a player, you're always searching for that feeling and you don't get it for long, but when you get it, it's like so you're just such you're in a groove. Like it's and it felt like that early on in the game. And then things happen and I don't know, there's been a lot of people talk about it, but I, we, I think every single one of us as an individual probably take moments back during that latter half of that second quarter. Um, I feel that's where we let ourselves down a little bit, let the foot off the gas pedal a little bit. And, you know, any team these days will take it up to you and, and roll you. So for us, it was a, a bit frustrating upon reviewing it. Um, those moments then turned into them obviously getting a bit more of a run. And But in hindsight, if you look at all the stats in the third quarter, we actually had more inside 50s and we had a similar amount of shots in that quarter. We just didn't kick our goals and they did. So there was a moment of it. Yeah, there's a lot of moments that we probably wish we had could have had back and potentially have scored. Um, but in the end, I mean, we played a, a team in Carlton that were very hungry and, you know, made a prelim final last year. So they know they know no rollover, that's for sure. Like they're a great team and they came back and won and probably or definitely deserved to win on the night. So um disappointing result from for our, from our point of view, from considering where we were at in the in the first quarter or first quarter and a half, second quarter, even half time. So um we reviewed it pretty open and honestly too, which was good. And then uh, we look forward now to to what we can do this week against the, the Dockers. I guess touch on the review, um, speak about what you can speak about. You know, a lot of things stay within the four walls, but what was the, I guess, the message of the review? Was it, you know, I've, I've obviously read a few media reports and outlets, if you want to call it, and a lot of it says complacency and, um, you know, players clearly, well, you know, I've, I've definitely been in that position before where sometimes it does creep into your mind that, oh, well, uh, this is probably a little bit too easy. Probably don't try as hard defensively, or whatever it may be. Not saying that was is what the case was, but yeah, what was the review? You know, like that, or yeah, what was the review more about? Yeah, it was like that. We looked at a few moments where you know individuals that you know might have had an opportunity to do something and they didn't. They chose not to. Um, whether that was putting pressure on or following through on a. I don't know, trading, you know, running past a player and switching with your teammate to then help him out and then that helps you. But none of that was going on. So the team stuff wasn't really there, um, which was disappointing. And But it was only really for like a patch of about 25 minutes because we looked at it. We looked at the whole game, across the whole game. And yeah, it was about 25 minutes that all this stuff happened. And then the rest was was good again. So it doesn't take long for opposition teams to get involved in the game and, and come back like Carlton did. We also looked at our missed opportunities as well. So if we had to kick those goals, then they don't go up the other end and score and potentially it, it builds our lead. So little things like that um, throughout the night cost us for sure. What about yourself individually? I mean, I've seen you got three coaches' votes. I think it was three. Um, so you clearly had an impact on the game. I know you'll be a little bit harsher on yourself, but how did you feel like you went individually? How did you feel? Oh, indiv- Individually, I felt pretty good. I was talked to a few people about preseason and whatnot and I sort of came back a little bit for, for, from a bit behind in, c- compared to others because I had the ankle stuff post-season last year. So I sort of hit the ground running four weeks before we went back. So I didn't have a lot of time to build my fitness and whatnot. So I sort of feel like I've gone on that gradual incline into into the year and I felt great out there covering the ground. Normally, I mean, last year I was cramping in like the third quarter up here in the in the sunshine and the the heat. So it was nice to feel that way. Um, first half, I felt like I was, you know, having an impact. I played a bit more forward, which was which was good. Um, like playing up there, like I said, to you, I want to kick a few more goals this year. So hopefully that happens, uh, you know, throughout the season. But my third quarter, I was a bit disappointed in, even though they had a bit of momentum didn't have a huge impact. I was playing on Cripper around the ball and stuff and felt like I could control him. But outside of that, they just kept, you know, winning the footy and controlling the footy. So we didn't get much opportunity to actually take it off them and, and get involved. But uh, fourth quarter, again, got going again and sort of try to help us out and, and keep us in the game. But overall, I was pretty, I was pretty happy. I mean, there's definitely times that you want to take back, like I said before, um, 
but yeah, just disappointed in the end and, and frustrated that we let that that lead go and, and lost that game of footy. But we look forward to this week now. That's right, mate. And you, uh, I guess if you look at it from last year, you guys, and I think you got belted by Port Adelaide in the in the first game of the year. Um, so no, I guess only lose by one point is a uh, is definitely an improvement from last year. I mean, we all know how the season <laughs> ended for you. You made the grand final, so um, the Brisbane Lions move on pretty quickly. They're a very very good side. Um, oh, we may as well touch on this week. When do you travel? You travel on the Friday, play on the Sunday. Obviously. Travel this Friday. Yep. Yep. Um, how you feeling? Frio's, uh, you know, Frio's are probably, it's one of those, um, in my opinion, one of the what if teams. I mean, from their list perspective and who they have on their list, they could beat anyone on their day. And mm. it was only two years ago with essentially the same group. Um, I think you add in, I think Luke Jackson, um, a couple others. You know, they made a semi final and almost made a prelim. And, and I feel like they're going to be one of the teams that's going to be around the mark this year. And um, I'm very interested and keen to see how they go and um, excited to see how they go, to be honest. I think they're going to be a very good side to watch. Um, how are you guys anticipating, I guess, the game to unfold? And um, where do you reckon you'll have to be? And how do you reckon you'll have to play to beat them? Because they w- there'll be no uh, easy slouch over there in, in the West, as we know. Yeah, it's a good question. I, I, I remember last year, thinking back to last year and thinking that the trip to Perth was an easy trip for us. It's actually six hours, like it's halfway mm. to America to get over there. Yeah. Um, so it's a it's a big trip. And yeah, don't take it lightly because last time I did and I felt like I, it impacted the way that we played as a group and me individually, I didn't feel as good as what I, I did last time. So um, yeah, I'll be... Be sure to making sure that I, you know, feel a lot better this time. Do a few things differently because I didn't feel good last time. But um, to answer your question, yeah, I, th- I feel they are one of those sides, and in front of their home crowd, especially they they get up and for round one against us, it's going to be big over there. So I look forward to the challenge. We do. We looked at them today. Um, they've they've played some good footy in in the past, and uh, they really like to take the game on with their hands and and their feet. Uh, you know, using their numbers and and building the ball up, and then getting an inside fifty to their small. This I feel like their small forwards are really dangerous for them. Um, so we're gonna have to be really good in the air and on the ground for sure. But yeah, I, I look forward to it because there's a lot of things that you know we didn't do so well against the Blues in that second half that we'll look to do this week a lot better. And I feel like if we do those things well, then it'll hold us in good stead throughout the night. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll get our noses in front at the end. Yeah, it's a game that I'll um, definitely be keeping my eye on. I can't wait to see you dominate and um, hopefully you guys get a win. Uh, before we move on to other footy news, I wanted to just touch on a sour note from your game. Um, obviously, the injury to Kitty Coleman, who, in my opinion, is one of the most underrated players in the AFL, could be the most underrated player in the AFL, probably top five kick in the competition. He's someone that opposition teams... Uh, do not allow or try not to let him allow to have time and space because he just cuts you up with his ball use Um, and he's a class player and I feel like he's going to be extremely missed by you guys. Um, You know, one of those injuries that is really, really hard to replace. Firstly, how's he going? Obviously, I know the boys would have all gotten around him. Um, As I said, terrible news. Secondly, how are you going to cover for him? Who's a player that could potentially come in and um, I guess, you know, probably not play his same role because there's not many who could play like him, but, you know, I guess be that cover for him. Yeah, I think he's in good spirits. Um, it was shattering on the night to to hear what had happened and it was a suspected ACL. You know, they said 90% sure that it was an ACL and I remember talking to him after the game and he's like, oh, I'm gonna, just going to hang on to that 10% and see what happens tomorrow. So, unfortunately, he got the news on the Saturday and we all did and, yeah, like you said, it all got around him, but... He's had surgery today, and I think he's in good spirits. Um, posted to the to his Instagram, so that's always nice to see him with a smile on his face. And um, yeah, we're just gonna have to get around him and support him throughout the journey. We're, we're lucky. We're not lucky, but there's a lot of guys at the club that have um, had or done knees, so they'll be able to help him through the process. Mm-hmm. And I think we've got four now with Tommy Dude, four or five in there that have done ACLs now. So. Um, yeah, they'll support him throughout the journey and so will we. Uh, we look forward to having him back and like you said, he's going to be a massive out for us but we're lucky in having a lot of guys that have been pressing for selection um, throughout the preseason like you guys have 
Um, but we get Connor McKenna back, I think, this week potentially. So hopefully he comes back into the fold. And um, I'm not sure if he's actually available until we train on Thursday. We train Thursday. So this that's after this one comes out. So, um, yeah, whether he plays or not, I'm still not sure. But hopefully, I know there is hope that he's playing this week. So, yeah, we'll be keen to get him back in the team and get his ball use out there. But Kitty's a massive out and, yeah, we're going to struggle to cover for it, cover for him, that's for sure. Yes, he's going to be missed this year. He's an absolute star. Hopefully, he gets uh, can recover sooner, quicker, or well, sooner rather than later, and um, we can see him back out there next year. And, and for what it's worth, probably should give our love to Sam Doherty as well, obviously. Absolutely. Um, was in your game as well, and that is just absolutely terrible news. One of the most respected players in the AFL and someone who's so admired from afar from everyone who, you know, plays AFL, but just him as a person, he's going to be sorely missed for Carlton, but just footy in general. And as as I said for Kitty Coleman, hopefully uh, hopefully uh, he can heal um, sooner rather than later and um, we see him out there next year. Um, is there anything else you want to touch on for your game before we move on to the other games? Nah, let's talk about yours. We, we, we've sort of touched on yours a little bit, but what are you, what are you looking forward to? Obviously, got the D's, and it's a bit of a. Do you think it's still a rivalry in terms of um, playing against each other? You, you've got Harmsy now, so there's there's another yeah. layer to it. Oh, I wouldn't wouldn't say as much as it was post the twenty one granny, um, and even before that. But no, I don't think I would say it is. It is as much as it. You know, you'd say a. Uh, a Bulldogs Giants game, or um, yeah, that probably is the one that comes to mind. But we definitely love playing against Melbourne. I mean, the last three years we've played in round one, so well, two years plus now this year, so three times. Where so each year uh, we know the schedule's coming out. We're just presuming we're playing Melbourne because um, that's what the AFL loves doing for us. But um, uh, yeah, I I I'm excited, mate. I I, f- I feel like um, as I said, I won't touch on you know where where I feel like we're at because I I did before. But from Melbourne's point of view, I feel like, you know, coming off a loss is clearly going to motivate them to want to knock us off. Um, You know, there's there's obviously a lot of chatter around, you know, round one losses. You know, I've I've read some stuff about Collingwood and, you know, whether they're, you know, falling off the the bar already. And um, it just blows my mind because it's one round. I mean, we're talking about one round off the back of a long preseason. Some teams are just better prepared for, for one week of footy than what another team may be. So, um, you know, I know full well Melbourne, um, you know, are one of those teams where people are clearly talking about them and, and this and that, but we know their best is is, is a top, well, in my opinion, a top four team. They've got some class across the whole field. Um, you know, they've got some players that you just cannot let play well and, and we're going to hope that we don't allow that. Um we know they're probably going to want to try and take us on a little bit as they have historically and, um, you know, beat us up around the ball, which, you know, they are a very good contested ball side and something that we're just going to have to bring our aim, A game with. I feel like um, that's something that we've really focused on in, in making sure we bring in those strengths across the practice games that we had and, and then now into the season. We're going to have to bring that against a Melbourne side that brings that as good as anybody. Um, and yeah, and being able to withstand their pressure is something that we're going to have to bring as well. So, um, you know, uh, no doubt uh, the first five minutes, everyone's going to be looking at each other like, oh my God, how hard is this? Because that's all, what it's always like. <laughs> um, but once we get that second wind and, and we find our feet and um, the sun starts to go down because we're playing at 3.30 and it's a scheduled 30 degrees at this stage. So hopefully it's not that hot. Um, you know, we'll find our legs and, and yeah, ho- let the game come to us and um, hopefully we walk away with four points because we haven't beaten Melbourne, um, you know, in those opening games in, in those two seasons. So um, it's something that I definitely want to do and, and I know it's something that the boys want to do. We, we love playing against really good sides and and as you did touch on, you mentioned Harmsy as well who um, he's well and truly going to get up for this contest. So, yeah, really looking forward to the game. I wish it was earlier. I, I um, For round one, I hate hate having to wait, you know, essentially to the last game of the round to play it. I, I wish it was on the Friday or the Saturday, but... um. You know, beggars can't be choosers, so I'm. Uh, I'll be. Uh, you know, raring to go once the game comes. I'm surprised it's actually not on a Friday or Saturday, or you know, in a prime time slot. To be honest, because normally the mm. the Melbourne dog or the D's dogs games are pretty well publicised. So mm. I'm sure it'll be well publicised on Sunday, probably in the three twenty slot. So it's still a good good time slot, which is good. Yeah, well, we don't. Our first three games are 
um, all Sunday afternoon games. So I think it's more of a reflection of uh, how we went last season, which wasn't ideal for us. So hopefully uh, once we uh, will do play and, and have a success, successful season, not success. So what did I say? I said success, <laughs> not success, <laughs> successful season. Um Next year, we could be a, a blockbuster round one, maybe uh, the Brisbane Lions versus the Western Bulldogs. But, um, but no, nah, looking forward yeah, to uh, our game. <laughs> we'll move on to the <laughs> other games. Um, uh, what was your thoughts on the Sydney-Melbourne game, the, the opening? What was your – we've both you know, pretty much spoken about Melbourne. What's your thoughts on Sydney? I mean, they've been one of the teams that a lot of teams – uh, a lot of media um, personnel have spoken about with their inclusions and – you know how uh, good they are at home and and whatnot. Um, mm. You know, I could I couldn't have been more impressed than from what I saw from what I saw. Yeah, well, to be honest, I tipped Melbourne last week, so I was surprised that the Swans withstood the, you know, the Melbourne midfield. To be honest, and played the way that they did. I thought Isaac Heaney was pretty impressive in that midfield role that he played the other night. Mm. Um, but yeah, the Swans at home this year are going to be very very tough to beat. I don't think we play them at home, but. Um, we play them up here. So I look forward to seeing how they go this week against the Pies, though, who are going to be very hungry on Friday night against, um, you know, obviously the Swans who had won last week. So that's going to be a cracking game as well, starting off with the Thursday night game too. So it's going to be a good week of footy. It will be. That'll be a ripper. One that I want to mention, Brody Grundy. Yeah. Could be, is it too early to say that he will be in the frame to be the All-Australian Ruckman? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I witnessed Brody Grundy at his best up close when he was two-time, I think two or three-time All-Australian, was the best ruckman in the competition with Max Gorn. Um, obviously, that went, you know, that didn't, obviously wasn't there last year. But just watching him around the ball, um, you know, the way that he's essentially an extra midfielder is kind of what, you know, we haven't seen for the last two years. Now he's in a position to do that again and, I lo- I'm one of his biggest fans and I love the guy with all my heart. I love seeing him happy and play so well. Watching that on the weekend just reminded me of how good he can be and how important he is to a footy side when he's the main man. I mean, I feel like he's going to be a- an enormous difference for the Sydney Swans who who in reality haven't really had a dominant ruckman for a very, very, very long time. So, um, yeah, it's uh, I feel like he's going to be a massive point of difference. What about you? No, I agree with you. It looked like he was back to his very best and it's just good to see him smiling post-game. He would have been pretty nervous, I reckon, coming up against the Ds, obviously been there for a year and playing against the arguably the best ruckman in the league in Maxi Gorn. Timmy, you'd probably be flat that I've said that. But uh, he's, uh, yeah, coming up against one of his old teammates and, and playing the way that he did. I think the first half was interesting and, you know, Brody was probably not on top and then in the second half just played really well and, and helped the Swans win the way that they did. So very, very happy for him too, mate. Me too. The Gold Coast game, Gold Coast Richmond, Matty Rao. Oh, like, yeah, it, it is baffling me that he, so I, I seen, it just pops up on my feed. There was, you know how I think someone does an MVP, an AFL MVP, uh, five, four, three, two, one vote. It's it's a media personnel in the AFL.com. Do you know who it is? It might be Damian Barrett or someone maybe. Matt Rao in his feed, I think got either one or two votes. And I'm thinking, how can someone have 20 clearances, 25 contested possessions? And I watched that game from start to finish. And, mate, it's one of the best games I've seen from an individual, mate. He was dominant from the very get-go. In my opinion, clearly the best player of the round by by a mile. Um, baffles me that, firstly, he wasn't a five-voter in, in whatever that was. So maybe hopefully next week we see better votes. But uh, did you watch <laughs> that game? Did you watch that game? And <laughs> no, nah, I didn't. I didn't. Oh, mate, Gold Coast Suns—they look, in my opinion, look really good. And I know last week on on our show, you spoke about a team to surprise us and finish in the top the eight. And I mentioned the Gold Coast Suns. I mean, oh, if I'm uh, if they're playing anything like that, they're well and truly going to be in the eight. They were really, really impressive. Yeah, well, I didn't get to see any of it, but I saw all the stats and stuff and. Like you said, Matty Rao looked like he had one of the games for the ages. So if he continues to play like that and the Suns play the way that they did, they're going to be very hard to beat. And, and I think what impressed me a couple of things is the way they moved the footy. They were so daring and bold and aggressive with their ball movement. And their midfielders, man, like Noah Anderson, Matt Rao took Miller through there. Sam Flanders, Jared Witz is a very underrated gun ruckman. 
mate. Yep. They're they're going to rival any midfielder in the comp, any midfield group in the competition. So look out, everyone who plays against Gold Coast Suns. Um, and then the Saturday night game. Did you watch that one? I watched a bit of that one. Yeah, I was traveling back from the Goldie, but got to see the uh, the Giants put on a bit of a show. It was impressive, very impressive, and they. They talk the talk and they walk the walk, as some would say. They uh, they were pretty good. I thought it was it was funny seeing uh, a few of the things happen pre game and whatnot. But <laughs> it's uh, it's all a bit of a laugh. And yeah, the Giants they they sure uh, they show the the reigning premiers. You know what they're up to this year. I didn't. See, what happened pre game? I didn't see it. <laughs> oh, Brado's Brado's mate Coxie is uh, doing the ruck work for the opposition by the looks. I'd love to have seen um, Mason Cox and Shane Mumford in a real game as two genuine ruckmen because, uh, yeah, that would have been uh, a great contest. But um, in terms of the game, I mean, you know, the Giants, again, I think are going to be thereabouts, top four team. I mean, they they are going to be very hard to beat at home. Uh, they clearly came with a hunger, which was, which was uh, great to see because I personally love watching the Giants play. Um, and – the way that they won and how they won comfortably, they did all that whilst Toby Green had a somewhat quietish game and wasn't up to his, you know, dominant tricks, which just should scare opposition teams because if he gets up and running and, you know, the team is playing the way they are, they're going to be a good team to play against and watch. So that was a uh, a great game to watch. Um Anything else footy-wise you want to move on? Is there anything this week you're looking forward to? Any games other than my game obviously because i know you'll be excited to watch your old boys play but is there anything that you're keen to watch or to, uh, keen to look out for um no nah, i'm just keen to watch footy again you know in melbourne obviously the the opening round was up in the northern states up here in brizzy and and in sydney as well so it'd be cool to see a packed mcg crowd on the tv uh, starting with carlton richmond we should do our tips before we move on actually let's go through our oh, tips yep. carlton right, richmond the- on thursday night Carlton, I'll I'll go against you. I'm going oh. I'm going against you. I'm going to go with Richmond. Okay, next one, Collingwood, Sydney. Uh, I'm going to go Collingwood. I'll go with Collingwood as well. Yep. Uh, S- Essendon, Hawthorne. Ooh, ooh. See, it's so hard because you haven't seen them play yet. But you know, Hawthorne's a team I think is going to be a really big improver. So I'm going to say Hawthorne. I'll go with Essendon. Two different this week so far. I, I, Giants. I hope Brado. I hope Brado tracks all these tips for us for the end of the year, so we see who wins. Um, Giants. Nor are Giants. Yep. Giants. Giants. Uh, Geelong. St Kilda. Ooh, where's that game at? That's at GM HBA. Ooh, what do I think? Geelong. St Kilda. I'm going to say because it's at home for Geelong. Geelong. I love how serious you're taking this. I'm going to say Geelong too. <laughs> the Suns and the Crows. So that's uh, get engaged of – yeah, th- that's in Gold Coast? Yes. Uh, well, going off the game on the weekend, mate, I'm going the Suns at home every week. Oh, I'll tip the Crows then if you're tipping the Suns. Uh, D's dogs, obviously you're going to say dogs. I'll say, I'll say dogs too. Um, Port Adelaide, West Coast. I'm going to say Adelaide Port Oval. Adelaide. Port Adelaide. Port Adelaide. And then Dockers Lions to finish off. Well, mate, I'm going the Lions. I think you guys will bounce back. And I'll be keen to see the result of that game. So there's me tips. There's our tips. There you go. See uh, see how we go. We got three. We got three different this week. So it's a big week. So do we even know what the score was last week? Because I know I went Sydney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got me by one. Come on. Pumped about (laughs) that. Before, but before we move on, we have to do our bloom of the week, our Brooks bloom about, of the week. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So, have you got one this week? Yours was, you know, pretty average last week. Let's admit, mine. You couldn't beat the avocado man. So, what's your Brooks bloom of the week this week? No, I'm probably not going to be able to beat yours um, this week because mine is another sporting achievement that I just think is incredible. Okay, let's have it. And it's on the basketball front. As it's not LeBron James because that didn't get a run last week on uh, – I mean, it got a run when you listen to it, the full podcast. Make sure everyone's listening to the Oz American Aces wherever you get your uh, your podcast. But uh, 
I, I did mention LeBron James scoring 40,000, but again, I'm going to go NBA again, and I'm going to say Luka Doncic just had his seventh triple-double in a row and seventh 30-point triple-double in a row for what it's worth. And um, that's no mean feat, mate. That is, uh, an, uh, you know, how long has the NBA been around for? Oh, ages. <laughs> 80 years, 90 years, and he's had seven 30-point triple-doubles in a row, which has never happened before. So um, that is my my Brooks Bloom of the week. Here we go. Cannot wait to hear what yours is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I said last week that I wasn't going to go footy, but I thought I would this week just to – Okay. I was trying to think of something else, and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to give it to um, this person. So my Brooks Bloom of the week, I was going to give it to Zachy Williams. For coming mm-hmm. back and going through what he'd been through, and we all know it's been a, a tough, you know, time period on the sidelines for him. Uh, period of time, I should have said. But I'm going with a bloomer, bloomer of the opposition team in Carlton in Jack Carroll. I thought he came on on the weekend and played a really important role in their in their comeback. And I played on him a, a little bit at some of the stoppages and whatnot, and. He's he's good size. He's, he's a good kid, and um, you can see that he really means business. So, I'm going to get around him for the Brooks Bloom of the week because I think he's going to be a, a good player. That is very sweet of you, mate. That is very nice. I hope uh, I hope Jack watches our our podcast and has a listen um, because he'll love that. I mean, I did see that too, and he was yeah he he was a big turning point for the boys when they for the Blue Boys when they came on. Um, so I couldn't agree more. But uh, no, it's good. Well done. I cannot wait for next week's Bloom of the Week. And I'm gonna go. I'll go from the. I'm gonna make sure I go away from the American sports. I'm gonna try and find something here, whether it's you know AFL or whatever it may be. Might find something a little bit quirky for the Brooks Bloom of the Week, as you did with the avocado. But um, well done. Well done. Thank you, mate. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to. I want to talk to you about. To, uh, something that I'm extremely passionate about, which unfortunately we have to wait. What month? In it? What month? It is March. We've got to wait another. Well, my watch is dead. Remember, I asked you for a new watch. I was about to see the month, but I can't see on my watch. Uh, the NFL, mate. Did you see trades today? I did. I saw some incredible trades when I woke up this morning. I was blown away. Saquon Barkley to Philly Eagles is that's big for me. To touch on the Saquon, for those who don't watch the NFL or care about it here in Australia, that is essentially like going from Carlton to Collingwood or Essendon yeah. to Hawthorne. It's just one rival to the main rival in the in the uh, in the NFL. So, um, to fair to, to, it's fair to say he's copped a lot of hate for it, um, leaving the Giants and going to Philly. But I love it. I think he's going to be. I think Philly. They're, early, they're my early tip right now for the Super Bowl. They're going to be incredible. But Mate, Kirk Cousins going to Atlanta, as you said, Austin Eckler, DeAndre Swift going, Tony Pollard leaving. Um, apparently, Justin Fields is going to get traded, which means Caleb Williams is going to go to Chicago. Uh, it is, yeah, mate, as you could imagine, me waking up today and seeing all this news, I was like a, a kid in a candy store. I couldn't stop reading all my NFL stuff and wanted to do I wanted to do an NFL mock draft at that stage, but I knew I couldn't because I got to wait for the uh, – Wait for the draft, but fair to say it was a good day. <laughs> <laughs> the one that surprises me too is Aaron Jones. Well, yeah. mate, who do they who did they get? They got um, they, Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs, that's right. Yeah, and they did the same with Joe Mixon. Did you see that the Bengals? Yes, yes. They released him. Crazy. T, T Higgins wants to get traded, which yeah, mate. All that stuff just blows my mind. All all over there in the um in the American world, it makes me think. Makes me like, have I, have we ever spoken about potentially contracts kind of being irrelevant? Like, would you have, would you sign a deal, right, where you sign like a five year deal or a four year deal? And in that deal, you only get one year guaranteed and every other year is just based off how you're performing. But if you get injured, they can just, they can release you. Like, how would you feel if they brought uh, that in? <laughs> Well, it depends how much – like if you're on the, the wicket that they're on over there, then it probably doesn't really matter. Like you get that much money in one year, it doesn't really matter. Whereas I don't know if we could do that with with the the size of our contracts because if you get injured, say, you know, you get injured tomorrow and then next year you don't get the rest of it, then you you might be in trouble. So, um, yeah, that's probably my only point around <laughs> around it. 
Otherwise, it, yeah, I'm more than happy to take, what is it, 30 million or whatever they sign over there per year. That's That'd be pretty nice. I think Kirk Cousins signed 100 mil with 50 mil guaranteed. So, yeah, I well, think it's go. fair to say he's going to be financially set up for the rest of uh, his life, depending on how he goes. But uh, oh, it's interesting to see, mate. But um, that's it for me. I've got to, uh, I don't really have anything else much to talk about unless you want to bring something else up. No, nah, I've just got to go and raise some funds for that Apple Watch of yours, mate. That's, that's what I got to do. All right, I'll start by watching this week's uh, All Star Mile with Mr. Brightside. Um, oh yeah, I would love. I want to know if you think Brightside wins, or are you going to go with? Uh, uh, all right, go. Who are you going with? <laughs> I saw he drew barrier eleven or something out of twelve. So no, I don't think he's going to win. I think he's going to be too wide. Does not matter when it comes to the bright side. Your favourite horse actually is running in it, Pride of Jenny. I saw that. I haven't had a good enough look, mate. I don't, I'm not sure. I can't tip you anyone. Need, you have to give a – all right. No, no, no. you got to give a tip. you got to give me a tip, mate. The All-Star Mile is a big race this week. For our listeners out there, we've taken a real big keen interest in the horses. I Right now, I'm going to go to uh, the, the field, right? So All-Star Mile, which is right here. So you've got – Mr. Brightside, Pride of Jenny, Cascadian, Air 10, Buffalo River, uh, Munya Mech. Where, where, did, uh, where did Cascadian Cascadian draw? Like draw? I think Barrier 7. Um, and then where's Pride of Jenny next to it? Bar- barrier 6. Brightside, Barrier 11. Ooh. Cascadian or um, Pride of Jenny over Brightside? You are on, Shake. You are on. <laughs> Oh, I am happy to roll with Mr. Brightside, the uh, the champion mile sprinter at the moment. Anyway, mate, that's uh, I reckon that's it for another week. Yeah, no, nah, it's been a good one, another good podcast. So um, thanks to Brooke and her team at Brooks Blooms for um, their support, as always. Uh, we look forward to the year ahead. And thanks, everyone, for tuning in and listening. Uh, we look forward to getting back on here next week and, and talking a bit more smack, Adzi. Looking forward to it, mate. Good luck. All the best. You too, mate. Cheers. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Brooks Blooms, your all-in-one landscaping solution. Brooks Blooms' three-step landscaping experience offers a seamless journey from design to construction and ongoing care, ensuring your outdoor space thrives year-round. Visit brooksblooms.com today to embark on your landscaping journey where every step is a step towards a vibrant and beautiful outdoor entertaining space.